the skin is clipped on midline from the cranial half of the scrotum to about mid prepuce, and then about five centimeters laterally on either side. The hair is first clipped in the same direction as the fur growth, and then in the opposite direction once it's shorter and more manageable. Avoid clipping the scrotal skin itself too short, as the skin is very easily irritated, and this can lead to post-operative self-mutilation. Stretching the skin tight can help get a close shave without cutting the skin. So on the left thigh here you can see we first start the same direction as the fur, and then once it's shorter we stretch the skin and go against the hair grain to get a nice close shave without cutting the skin. The clipped fur is then carefully vacuumed off the patient and the table to help decrease the risk of contamination. In the induction area, an initial dirty prep is performed. The purpose of this prep is to scrub away dirt and debris and to start contact time with the chlorhexidine scrub. For this scrub, non-sterile gloves can be used. Alternating rounds of chlorhexidine scrub and isopropyl alcohol or sterile saline are applied to the clipped surgical field. For the dirty prep, the direction of the scrub is not as important as it is in the sterile prep, which you'll see next. The point is just to get as much dirt, debris, and hair off of the surgical site as possible before getting into the OR. The dirty scrub is continued until the gauze wipe away relatively clean. Depending on how dirty the dog is, this typically takes between 3-5 to five rounds of alternating scrubs with chlorhexidine and isopropyl alcohol or sterile saline. Before transport to the OR, a chlorhexidine soaked gauze is placed over the surgical site to keep it clean and continue with contact time. In this lucky patient, a lidocaine testicular block is performed for max sparing local anesthesia. The syringe is always aspirated prior to injection to prevent accidental IV administration of local anesthetics. The structures in the spermatic cord are desensitized and this minimizes the response to surgical manipulation. Now with the patient under general anesthesia and in position on the OR table, the soaking transport gauze is removed and a sterile prep is performed, this time using sterile gloves and sterile chlorhexidine and alcohol gauze. When performing a sterile scrub, gauze should never drag from haired skin back towards the shaved and prepared area as this will drag dirt and debris from the haired area back into the surgical site. Notice how only short cranial and caudal motions are made on midline to prevent this from happening. And when the gauze prepare the haired to non-haired borders, they are removed out in that direction and do not scrub back towards the surgical site. We'll typically let the chlorhexidine sit on the skin for about 30 seconds or so in between rounds of chlorhexidine and alcohol scrubs. And next is a round with alcohol gauze to clear the skin of the chlorhexidine. Then we'll repeat another chlorhexidine round. Again, take notice how all motions start at the surgical site and sweep outwards and never return back towards the surgical site. Okay, while we're letting that contact time brew, we'll show you how to keep your sterile scrub containers clean while reaching in repeatedly for rounds of scrub. Your dominant hand is used to scrub and your non-dominant hand is used as your clean hand, which holds unused gauze and is used to reach back into the sterile container of chlorhexidine and alcohol gauze. A fresh gauze is taken from your clean hand each time. Two to three repetitions of chlorhexidine scrubs, contact time, and alcohol scrub are performed until a total of five minutes of chlorhexidine contact time has elapsed. The final scrub is always alcohol to remove chlorhexidine, which is irritating to the skin if left to dry. Now, the surgical site is ready to be isolated for surgery.